Welcome to the Cultivating Success Podcast. Jeff Sofer and Jonathan Wolfson are brothers and business partners of the top landscaping company, Nature's Experts. Nature's Experts is home to six companies that cater to all your outdoor needs. To learn more about Jeff and Jonathan, simply visit us at www.naturesexperts.com. On the podcast, Jeff and Jonathan bring together other business owners and entrepreneurs to share with you how they developed a prosperous company and how you can too. You will gain insights and meaningful advice on creating the building blocks to success and longevity in the entrepreneurial realm. And now, here are your hosts, Jeff Sofer and Jonathan Wolfson. Coach Mike, welcome to the Cultivating Success Podcast. Oh, thank you for having me. Good afternoon, Jonathan and Jeff. Hello, Michael. Always great to be with you. Always love having our coaching calls together. Yep. And really digging into some current things that we have going on within our business, things that we should be focusing on, and areas we need to be focusing more energy to. And one of the things that I really wanted to dig into this week specifically uh, from some personal things that we have going on inside the business really is goals and goal setting and really kind of, you know, how to achieve achieve (laughs) and formulate these goals that really kind of can align with your mission because, you know, me and Jeff today specifically, we took some time out and had lunch together. And when we took lunch together, we were going over some goals of what we wanted to achieve in the next 10 years, actually. And it's interesting how in 10 years, what you can accomplish actually, and actually how little you actually need to do to accomplish a goal in 10 years. Well, we know what can be accomplished in 10 years because we've worked together for more than 10 years. So we have a, we know what can be accomplished either. And we can decide whether it would be more or less than what we've accomplished. Well, I don't know if that's correct. I don't don't think that's correct actually though, because well, because goals and your skills are compounding because when you have one skill and you learn another skill, you have two. And then when you have two, you have three. So it's not an equal addition. Okay, but with the skills that we had when the first 10 years, you know, when, when you take a sampling of the, I mean, we've known each other a lot longer than 10 years, but uh, when you take that 10 years, there were certain skills that you had that I had. And then those 10 years, this is what's been accomplished, you know, measuring it in different ways. So you do know what you've accomplished in 10 years. Well, coach, I think we have a lot we have to get into here, but Let I know- follow we- it. We, we always have a, a way of starting our calls a certain way. So take, take it away then, okay? Well, what we start our calls out as, we always start with a wiffle. And a wiffle stands for what I feel like expressing. So, and uh, when we do that with anyone, it's let the person express. Everybody sells this back. And when they're done with the wiffle, like everyone says, thank you for expressing. And we pass it on. So since you... Point in me, this will be the first time I think I do the wiffle in this conversation. So what I feel like expressing it was great to have a week off last week and refresh and recharge. Didn't necessarily go as planned, supposed to go to Maine, but the, our host got COVID the day before we were supposed to get on a flight. So we went, did a staycation in South Florida. It ain't so bad to have a staycation. So I'm actually sick of eating lobster. And I was excited about getting on this call because we haven't spoke for a couple of weeks. I know you guys always got great things going on as far as growing the company and the team. And I'm looking forward to hearing more about it. That's why I feel expressing. Appreciate it. Thank you for expressing, right? (laughs) Jeff, what would you feel like expressing? I want to express that I'm feeling very grateful for various things. Since noon? Yeah. Just since just since today. noon, everybody. I, I just want to make I, sure it's clear. I'm I'm recapping that I'm uh, I'm always feeling grateful to some degree, but I need to remember that more often. Amen. Oh, well, thank got, you for expressing. I gotta agree with that for sure. So what I feel like expressing is I have quite a bit on my shoulders, particularly uh, right now, and Jeff does too. But Jeff is feeling grateful, so I'm feeling a little bit different than that. So I'm gonna elaborate <laughs> a little bit different of a story. And I am feeling really strong, but I am feeling really worn out. And I definitely feel like I have the strength to do anything, but I definitely have, uh, you know, only so much time, only so much energy, only so many resources. And, you know, as you, as we have continued to grow these companies, it's been very rewarding, very exciting, 
but you know, the, the larger that you grow it, it's almost the least lesser that you're actually in control of everything. So making decisions isn't a singular task. It's a group task. It's a team. It's a, you know, doing what's good for everyone. And it has really um, been very rewarding. I think that's what's given me a lot of my strength, but it's also been very, very difficult at times because, you know, relinquishing that and the decisions, maybe not giving the exact outcomes that we exactly want to see, I think right now, which plays into why uh, today we really want to kind of dig into some goals, because I think for me specifically, setting goals can allow for a little bit of peace of mind to separate those frustrations and what really is important, because the frustrations really aren't what is important. It's achieving your goals and how you get there isn't always, you know, sexy and fun and exciting and all that kind of stuff. But if you ultimately get to the destination, that's really what's important. Absolutely. And that's the first step. And, you know, thank you, you said something. Expressing. You're welcome. Thank you for expressing. I, I didn't welcome. realize that was still the whiffle. <laughs> um, <laughs> you mentioned something is, uh, you know, one thing I always am impressed about you too, you're always in fantastic shape. And what business owners need to know, and as we discuss goals. You want Jeff to take his shirt off? You mean physical? You want no. Jeff to take his shirt off right now? Physically and mentally, you know, um, physically and mentally, people don't understand that to have the long haul in business, you have to have stamina. It takes stamina, it takes energy, it takes enthusiasm, it takes a strong mind, it takes a strong body. So, you know, people forget that. You need to take care of yourself personally so you could have the stamina for the long haul. And, you know, you guys talked about over the last 10 years and 10 years moving forward. And maybe having the size company you have now and the amount of employees you have now you weren't quite ready to take that on 10 years ago. So in the 10 yeah. years, you've grown into the people you need to be, the leaders you need to be to manage these people, make the decisions. And now 10 years from now, you want to be bigger. And you know, there's a whole heck of a lot of growth in front of you going there too. So it's a That's constant ride to the next level. That's right. But you know, that only gives you peace of mind of be comfortable with the situation you're in because you certainly, you wouldn't have been able to do it, period before the thing is when you're in tough times it's it's easy to sit back have a conversation like this and say you know hey it's like you know you, but listen you've you've grown so much in 10 years you're so disciplined you've done all these really great things but it still doesn't replace what the world is right now specifically the world is difficult right now there's lots of turmoil there's the economic impact of different things going on which just creates a lot of uncertainty which ultimately just adds unnecessary pressure on everybody. It's not specific to anybody. It makes no difference who you are. It adds pressure to any and every person. But even after that whole conversation about what's going on in the outside of the four walls that we can't control, every Monday morning, we got to wake up, put our shoes on, make stuff happen within our organization for our clients. So that's, that's the great. one focus and getting that, knowing that we're here to do a good job for our clients and our team and our company. No matter what goes on, can't control that. I know what I can control. I know how I can show up and take care of my team and the organization. The thing is, is uh, stamina you mentioned before. And I definitely have the stamina. Like, that's not a problem. But it's the uh, being happy to be there and being as excited to be there without altering your state of mind, which a lot of times is positive, but for me becomes negative and for me becomes difficult and frustrating and makes me angry. And so I'm not the type of person that loses my stamina and gets paralyzed and can't operate and just like is stuck. I can still do everything I need to do, but I'm just angry about the state of affairs at certain times. So I'm thankful and grateful that I don't get like locked where I can't move, you know, mentally or physically. A lot of people do get like that. And I realize that. And uh, I don't get like that. I still move forward. I'm just not in like a good place sometimes, you know, in my brain. Well, you're both fortunate because you have each other for an outlet and you have me. So could you imagine being a business owner by yourself with no outlet and having all those frustrations? That would be a stuck. pretty difficult ride. That's the word that comes to my mind would just be stuck. You know, not having a partner to 
discuss and go through this and kind of pull you out of the mud that not have somebody else who can give you real tried and true advice that's subjective. And that's not just, you know, everything's great because you're in it, but it is great. But is it great as you want it to be? Are you hitting your goals? Are you pushing yourself? What's next? So on and so forth. And so I want to pick up on Jeff's stamina because I think for me, you know, particularly I, I, I've been using a couple of different words, stuck, difficult, heavy, yeah. so on and so forth or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And I think for me recently, um, as in like the last year, I've started to exercise a lot more. And when I've, since I've been exercising in the beginning, it really hasn't been very rewarding. It's just very grueling, so to speak. And, uh, for my birthday, I did uh, a certain exercise or whatever, and it actually made me actually feel uh, really good about myself, particularly because it made me think of more of what I'm capable of. Uh, instead of it just being a monotonous task. So on my birthday, I, which I don't think I told you this yet, coach. I, um, what well, was your birthday from last year? No, it was this, it was this year. I'm just talking about just after Evan's wedding. Oh, right now. Yeah. Oh, but you've been doing the exercise. I don't know, I don't yeah. know what you mean. So yeah. I've really been getting into exercising for since last year. Right. The 75 hard, correct? Yeah. So I did 75 hard, definitely was like the Kickstarter in the right direction, all that kind of stuff. Right. And have followed that pretty much almost all the way through the entire year. So gone through it an entire year and, um, you know, definitely have felt better, but I definitely have started to feel even more better that I'm, I've started to actually set some more personal goals for myself that are outside of work that are also difficult in the sense of it's making me feel a lot of uh, accomplishment or doing other things that are difficult besides being responsible, taking care of my family, taking care of work and all of that stuff. So I literally, um, I didn't know this. You're finding out now on the cultivating okay. success podcast. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, great to have you here, Jeff. Okay. So we, I finished 75 hard again for the second time the day before Evan's wedding and, uh, on his wedding, I, He's like, oh, are you going to drink or whatever? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not going to drink. Whatever. My birthday is the day after or whatever. And I want to like do something for myself. So we had the wedding, got home at like 11 or midnight or whatever. And I got up at four or five o'clock in the morning or whatever. And I ran four miles, biked 24 miles, and then ran another eight miles, which is a calculation of 36, I believe. Uh, one mile for every uh, year I was born. and. Uh, I thought of doing that from another person that I've heard who actually ran like, I think he ran, I think he ran a mile for every year he was born. I'm like, I, I can't do that. That's just, I don't think I, I didn't have enough time in the day because we had the, uh, uh, the brunch right. after Evan's wedding. So I only had like so many hours or whatever, but I did it. I did the 36 miles. I felt literally fine actually when I was done, like I was a little tired, but I wasn't like completely fatigued and pooped and yeah. like, Oh, I can't do anything else. I'm like done for the whole day. I was done at nine o'clock in the morning and I actually felt great. And I actually felt great about myself. The fact of that's what I decided to do with my time. I could have made another decision the day before, but this is the decision I made to prove to myself that I could do it. Something that isn't something that would normally be in my way of, of, of thinking like I like exercising. I like running, but I wouldn't think of doing that much particularly. I didn't even know if I could do it even. I just figured I'm like, I think I'm in good enough shape. I, I think I can do it. And what better way to start, you know, start the year off as far as another year older. And especially in a time where, you know, things have been really difficult for Jeff and I um, at work, at work. And I figured, you know, I need to give myself like a little bit more strength and courage and, you know, know, know what I can actually do and what I got it, what I get in me. Cause I know nothing can stop me. Right. But a lot of times you say it to yourself, so to speak, like just to be like, oh, nothing's going to stop me. Like I'm <laughs> invincible. Right. <laughs> and uh, this is kind of metamorphosized into like the physical sense of literally like nothing can stop me. I went out, did 36 miles, felt great afterwards. I literally could have worked out later in the day again. I actually did. You did. For anyone who's wondering, you, you I went for another four miles and I felt great. And I actually like it's definitely making me think more in line of, I think that this year would have been a lot more difficult. Would I have not done all these different things? And I don't know how equipped I would have been. You mean the physical, really if you wouldn't have done all the physical 
exercises and the regimen that you followed? Yeah, well, I think it's the Agent it's the portion that I'm actually doing for myself, actually, yeah. which is not a lot. You know what I mean? But it has compounded to where it looks like it's a lot. Yeah. Right. So I've only been doing, you know, it's an hour and a half or 45 minutes a day. I've been working out, which isn't a crazy amount of time to spend if you get up early or you do it right. late or whatever you decide to do. Right. But, you know, look at the result. It's something I didn't think that I would have been able to do, actually. And then now that I'm sitting here thinking about it more, I, think that it's part of the reason why I've been, you know, as headstrong as I have been going through all these different ups and downs with the new business that we bought, with the different expenses rising right now, with managing, um, you know, employees and managing, you know, people wanting additional money, just everything that's been coming our way or whatever. So I didn't, didn't uh, tell you about that before coach. It really wasn't anything that I actually even um, really publicized. I told Jeff that I was going to do it. Obviously my wife knew I was going to do it. It was pretty much about the gist of it. And uh, I just thought it was relative to what we're talking about as far as setting goals that I didn't even realize this was a goal. But now that I've gotten here, now I'm actually ready to set real goals of like what I want to accomplish more as far as that's concerned. Well, I understand what you're saying because uh, I didn't think I knew what you were going to say before, but I, I obviously know about all this. I thought you were going to say something else. Some other thing. That Please tell me what I was going to say. I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> he, re- he said from his birthday that he did and he realized a bunch of things. What did I do, Jeff? You. And I was doing what you did. I already knew that. I just thought you were going to come up. I thought there was something else I didn't know. And you know, the interesting aspect, you know, a a lot of listeners need to really understand is in business, it's very easy to get caught up in the business, in the business, in the business, in the business. But how you do anything is how you do everything. So when you commit to yourself first, because we need to commit to ourselves first, we need to do whatever we need to do so we can show up in great phys- physical mental form each and every day because we have a pretty big task. So and it was interesting, the nonchalant manner of what you talked about. Some people might be listening. Like, this guy is crazy, man. I didn't even have my second cup of coffee until nine o'clock in the morning on Sunday. And he's what, where, how many miles does he run? So what has been the value to you, what you've done for yourself physically of taking these challenges on doing the 75 hard and how that's parlayed and rolled it over into how you run the business and makes it not easier, but put you in a much better position to handle the same adversity and whatever goes on in the business. Well, I think it goes into balance. You know, I think everyone always says, you know, you need to be like, you know, have a balanced lifestyle between work, personal pleasure, your budgets, like, you know, life in general is all about balance in general, but business specifically is and isn't because it's really about being prepared to handle the unknowns and you really have to be tough and smart and you have to be ahead of the curve when you're dealing with business. And I think that the only way to, you know, succeed in business is to be overly prepared for what's coming. And it is a combination of being balanced because you have to take care of yourself, take care of the business, take care of your family, the people that you love, care for all that stuff. But there has to, you have to make sure that you're really taking care of yourself so you can show up for all those different people, which is some of the stuff we were talking, I was talking about with Jeff today specifically, is that, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, to accomplish the goal can actually be easier than you think to accomplish it. As big as you want it, you can scale it down into a small little bite-sized piece and you can actually look at it and be like, you know what, I can, I can do that. And then you don't even realize how easy it's going to be two years, three years, four years in to hit the goal that you actually might've even set for yourself, which you might even need to raise the bar again. But if you can't, if you don't have the energy to keep showing up for yourself, that, you know, you're going to just burn yourself out. Ultimately, your physiology has helped your psychology. Yep. Well, emotion Uh, is created by emotion. We move our body. If you just, do a, your power move, all of a sudden you feel better. Versus you literally you just started moving more physiology and it has helped his psychological uh, side of himself. I yep. think it's all, it only helped me though until I actually did something that I thought was a big deal. Well, no, you, like you're, you, you know, you're, if you like when okay. I worked out before and it's just hard every time you work out or whatever, I feel weak. You know what I mean? I am weak. 
when I work out now, I don't feel weak. I feel completely fine. I don't feel like anything. I feel like that's what I should have done. I feel like maybe I could have done more or whatever. I don't feel I weak. Think you I, were feel working, I think you were working out for maybe for the wrong reasons. And it wasn't because you were doing anything wrong. It's how most people work out. They work out with physical workouts to physically make a difference in their body. And obviously for their cardiovascular system, if they're doing you know some cardio, but John didn't do that. You started working out and just doing exercising and it helped your and affected your psychology because you were during that uh, physical exercise, you were able to decide psychologically how you wanted to sculpt, treat, take care of your body, your health, et cetera. And it really turned into something that you custom made for yourself that you can feel good about. But most people go into working out for just one reason, which is to physically look better. You know what I mean? Yep. You, you really didn't go into it for that. I think you knew that would be a byproduct of it. But I, mean, I, I feel like know. I already got that covered pretty good. And there's a de- direct correlation <laughs> between like two years oh, ago when you first did the 75 hard, you could have easily given up. You could have quit when it's got hard because let's face it, you don't, yeah. you work, when you first start working out, it's not easy. You wake up the next day or you can feel it. So you got through the, the tough part about it. And then now you're feeling great. So the same oh. thing with business, like there's some tough times in business and you got to, you've got it out and get through it. And then a year from now, or you got to have somewhere to pull your strength from. But I have a question. Well, I have a question. Why do you think that you could tell people that you felt it so important? Maybe take a minute to answer it. Um, Why did you, because I watched you trying to take it to such a level to prove to yourself that you needed to be stronger mentally, psychologically, whatever. How did you know that you, how does someone recognize that? And obviously we I put it into for, action. I think for me, that? actually, I kind of came to the actual personal conclusion that like, I have a lot of aptitude. So yeah. I can get really far in life because I have a lot of aptitude. I'm not yeah. actually really, really, really smart. Like mathematically, grammatically, all that stuff. Well, but like I have book smart. Very, You're talking about book smart. Book smart. People, yeah. But I'm very dynamic thinking. I have a very good brain in that sense. And I think that during the last couple of years, I figured, I think it's gotten me about as far as I'm going to get. And I'm sure it would have, you know, still gotten me farther, but I've realized that there's things that I don't have that I need to do that I should be doing that I came to the conclusion that if, if I want to be as fulfilled, if I want to be as happy, if I want to be as successful, if I even want to sustain and keep what we have. I can't keep what we have doing what I've always done because there's no guarantee you're going to keep what you got even. And the skills that you need, like at least for us, like right now, the skills that we need now aren't the skills that I, that's my aptitude of just being smart and able to dissect problems and all that kind of stuff. It's even more than that because the type of business we're running, the type of people that we're interacting with, the type of management we need to develop, the culture we need to develop. These are things that like, you don't just come up with because you're smart. You know what I mean? It's not just like, oh, I woke up this morning and I figured out this problem or whatever. You have to really, you know, almost humble yourself and to understand that there is so much more that you don't know. And you don't by any means have to know everything, but you do have to unlock your brain. So you actually think that like, I'm going to, attempt to learn more. I'm not sure what I'm going to learn, but I'm going to learn more. And while learning more, I'm going to try to be a little bit more open-minded through all these other different channels and people and suggestions. And, you know, we have a, within our whole management team, you know, how you handle those incoming questions, how you implement certain ones, how you handle the person. Like these are just all different things that, you know, we're not salespeople here. You know what I mean? We're, we're managers of people's business and landscaping and equipment and, Problem solvers. Problem solvers, you know? You know, no matter what we do, we're always problem solvers. To be able to identify that, what you said at the beginning, and you first started off by saying that you're not really smart, you know, in the sense of certain, you know, ways of book smarts and so on and so forth. The thing is, being able to identify what you identified 
and then to decide to take the action that you took. And then of course doing it, but being able to identify it, that's fucking smart period. Because if you can't identify things, you don't give yourself a reason to do them, but you literally saw yourself and identified that to be able to say, to, to be able to sustain what I have, to be able to have more than I have. I know that I've gone as far as I can with what I've been like already. Well, it was a progression to even when we got introduced to coach Mike, you know, we got pretty far and uh, based upon people that we knew, they saw that it could, there could be a need for a business coach. And, you know, when we met you coach, it was, you know, indifferent, I would say you were at a different stage in your development, just like everyone goes through every single year of their life until they're dead but everyone is at a different stage. And, you know, you hadn't come across two people like me and Jeff. I mean, there aren't typically two brothers that are in business that are 17 years apart and, you know, think completely uh, different sometimes, but are always on the same page. So it's, you know, not a, you have to be almost like a, a psychologist versus a business coach, I think maybe. And um, I think that was, that was like the first step, but that was, four years ago or five years ago, whatever it was. And, you know, that was the first step. And it took years and years and years until it hit me a little bit more uh, in the face of things that I, you know, wasn't doing, need to start doing. And it didn't come from coach particularly. It came from me just continuing to go through these processes that we've created and these scenarios and these different things and um, just continuing to be open-minded, having these coaching calls, having these coaching calls now, being on a podcast even, you know, this is going to result, you know, a different something for us. I don't know what actually, you know, maybe it'll help somebody, maybe it'll help me because, you know, I'm just getting more of this stuff out, you know, like we do on our coaching call. I'm not sure yet. I'm looking forward to see what the result is. You know, it comes, well, very, it comes very natural to me to speak my mind say my feelings, all those things. You know, John is a, a much, much, much more introspective person. And you may realize if you know him that he's introspective, but you just don't realize the depth of it. And I always get amazed at when I hear him say stuff like this, what he just described a little while ago, how deep his thoughts are, how well thought out they are, how amazing that he was able to draw such conclusions about himself and his life and then, you know, put a plan into action to do it. It wasn't, it's not amazing that he actually did it because he, I know, I mean, I know him the best. He can do anything, but the fact that he's so introspective and thinks about things in such a logical manner and then identifies it with himself and is so clear about it and sees everything in such a way, you know, to me, that's cultivating success, you know? Well, the first thing I identified the first time we spoke more than four years ago is in the UFC, when fighters come in, every once in a while, they get a fighter and they say, this fighter has the it factor. Mm -hmm. And entrepreneurs, you can identify an entrepreneur as like this entrepreneur has the it factor. And the it factor is doing whatever it takes to become successful, knowing how to get your brand out there and commit, because commitment, everyone throw that, that word around and they throw the word integrity around, but it's a, it's a whole different ball game when you're living commitment and you're living with integrity. So that's what I identified the first time we spoke and that's why we're all growing together because we're all committed, we all have integrity and you guys have the it factor because that's why I love working with you because I love folks that get up every day and just want to get better. Yeah. Someone, I was talking to someone earlier this morning and he said, uh, you know, every once in a while, you know, he would drink if he got really depressed. And I said, well, he goes, well, what's your addiction? I said, my addiction is self-improvement. So just think about that. If your addiction is getting better each and every day, it's a pretty guard. That's a pretty darn good addiction. So that's my addiction. I just want to get better, a little bit better each and every day. And then there's a whole bunch of things that go along with that to get me there. But if I just focus on that, that's it. So I want to get to the planning. I want, before I ask you a question, 
is I want to state that, you know, a few weeks ago, we had the Grow Club, we had 90 day planning. And at the end of the day, we do the Wiffle and we get all, I think we had 40, 50 people there. And what I really admired when I saw, this is what I remember about you, Jonathan, is that at the end of the day, you, Frank and Josh, it was like, there was 50 people in a room, but as far as you three were concerned, there was three people in the room. All three of you were brainstorming and masterminding and working out your plan and discussing situations. And that's what people really need to understand about being successful. There was 40 to 50 people in the room, but you three, it was three of you saying, coach, we're good. And you were just knocking out the plan to figure out how you could be successful of what needs to happen over the next 90 days. And you talked earlier about a 10 year plan. And it's, I mean, first of all, What's the value of being clear on where you want to be 10 years from now in the first place? Let's well, start the answer, there. To answer part of your thing, when we were at the growth club, and so everyone knows the growth club is uh, Michael is uh, our business coach, and every quarter he gets all, all of his uh, people that he coached together and does a whole day-long uh, seminar, I guess you would call it, right? Workshop. 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 Yeah call it a mastermind. I think that's like a popular term used these days, right? Yeah. It gets everyone together and there's different, different, um, you know, business entrepreneurial strategies that are gone over during the first part of it. And at the second part, it is about a 90 day plan of what you're going to start to do to execute, to move you forward to the goals that you set. So you set yourself goals and you have objectives and you have your different bullet points of what you're actually going to physically do to move you forward. So these things obviously could be marketing, advertising, sales, margins, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, when we had that meeting and we were there, you know, I, I'm laser focused in on what we need to do. The part that I'm struggling with, you know, gauging myself on how I'm doing and everything is, you know, the execution, because I'm not responsible for other people's actions. But the thing is, I am ultimately responsible as well as Jeff is, though, they work for to, us. Uh, to afford to pay all these bills and all these different people. Mm-hmm. So it is really a double-edged sword where, you know, you straddle a line of giving real, real strong, good teamwork, collaboration. You saw it right there. We were definitely all dialed in, all on the same page together, working on one mission and all coming to what needs to happen. But at the end of the day, the hard part is that that particular goal in someone else's hands, you know, our business considerably is quote new, you know, because we didn't have me and Jeff and we added one employee and then two and then three and then four. We've acquired companies. So it's a different model. There isn't, you know, we have a large team. We have people that we trust to do anything, but with 200 plus employees and a hundred plus different vehicles that are on the road and, you know, all these different customers to service, you know, goals and handling daily operations, you know, without having a lot of extra people, so to speak around, it's difficult to be able to do both sometimes. So gauging your success is a little bit of a moving target, which it can be, because it really, the only way to do it is to go above and beyond almost. Yeah. Yeah. Then you have to inspire your team to show up the way you show up, get that commitment and that integrity and that get up and go and that stamina and that energy. And yeah, it's a, it's not the easiest thing in the world. But yet what also is good because I'm speaking to some of the folks on your team and that and they have certain struggles which we can help them with and struggle and coach up and they can get as each individual is getting a little bit better each and every day as an organization, start growing. Uh, I'd like to mention that too. So, you know, for everyone that's listening here, you know, our strategy is that, you know, as far as with coach is, you know, we don't know everything, right? You know, we were introduced to a business coach four years ago, being introduced four years ago, helped me and Jeff, we're just two people ultimately at the end of the day, right? And it definitely helped move us forward. And we thought to ourselves, we're like, boy, that would really, I bet, I bet he'd be really beneficial to speak to our top management also. So we actually have our coach speak, you know, monthly, every other week to different management on our team to make sure that we're really all really kind of following that same mission, kind of checking in where everyone's at, because I might get a different answer from a certain particular employee than Jeff would, than coach would. And then it's now him knowing us for years and some of these employees for years, 
you know, it's really dialed in to kind of cut a lot of the bullshit out. This isn't something you can do mm-hmm. just like uh, you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm going to get a business coach and they're going to help my whole team. It's going to be fantastic. No, like you have to have a real rapport for somebody who really is a liaison for your business and a coach to really help mentor and guide too. And also the person has to be ready. I mean, we have an experience that one of your individuals that have been working with the company for over a year uh, was avoiding me for whatever reason, no big deal. Yeah. But he finally, when the student is ready to teach Will Fear, he had something happening in his life that he had a little epiphany. And so, okay, I need you guys said, okay, you need to talk to Coach Mike. And we're talking on a weekly basis. Yeah. And he's stepping up his game and uh, one person at a time. So coach today, so, so getting back on track on goals here. Okay. So I kind of, I kind of sidebarred us a little right. bit. So what's the value of a, having, knowing what the 10 year goal looks like. So for me and for Jeff, we spoke about today, you know, the goal is, is peace of mind. I think, you know, having a goal specifically uh, what we were reflecting on today specifically. And again, I'm 36, Jeff is 53. So there's two different perspectives, but I think in the same way that Jeff does. But the reason why I'm saying our age is because we were specifically thinking 10 years down the line, you know, you're, he's at a different stage in his life, particularly than I am. I have two little kids. His kids are all grown up. One of them just got married. And, you know, you ultimately need to be happy with your life also too. So our goal that we were really were, were contemplating was, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, and you're somebody who's very motivated by success, not by money, but by success, you know, money is a little bit of a scorekeeper, so to speak. So there has to be an equal amount of, you know, keeping score with the money. And there has to be ultimately a certain amount of success that you can feel like, you know, you really achieved close to your potential. Because I think, you know, there's really nothing worse than kind of reflecting on your life and being like, you know, the what ifs and the the shoulda, woulda, couldas or whatever, and just not really achieving what you really could have achieved. Because at the end of the day, you, you know, people who are particularly in Jeff's situation, he's not, we would talked about this, he's not going to spend all of his money, most likely by the time he, you know, passes away in 100 years by the time you know, that with medical advancements and all of those different things that are upcoming here, you know, but it's like, it still is important, because you have to think to yourself, you know, in 10 years, he'll be 63 years old, he will not be dead, he'll still be working with me, right? Hopefully. And hopefully I won't be dead. I mean, yeah, we'll definitely still be working with me. Well, I'm 64 and I'm still alive. So that's, there's a good testament for you. <laughs> I'm not meaning to age you guys out here yeah. by the way, right now. No, by the way, just so you know. no, it's just honestly talking about age. We all get older. If we're lucky enough to get older, that's another thing to be grateful for. You know, getting older. Another reason, because another reason to take care of yourself. So you can age gracefully. Is, that's, that's why a birthday is something to be celebrated because you're either getting older or you're dead. Well, as I was in the financial industry, I mean, I, I managed a lot of money and met a lot of different folks. And you could take two 60-year-olds and put them side by side. One looks 80, the other one looks 50. And yeah. it's all based on how they've taken yeah. care of themselves. Yeah, most of them look 80. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we wanted to devise a goal. And I asked Jeff beforehand, you know, about like a certain amount of money he wanted to achieve at that time or whatever. And I was like, okay. I'm like thinking to myself, 10 years, this is where we're at, so on and so forth. And um, ironically, his goal wasn't aggressive really at all, even. Well, for you and me, it's not. For other people, it would be. But for you and me, it's not. Well, no, the number is aggressive, but it's not aggressive ultimately in the sense of to do it for our mechanics coach, it was a combination of saving, investing, and real estate. Okay, two of the things that you just said, though, require a lot of discipline. And that's what I'm saying for us, you have to understand that, that and people out there listening, John takes for granted sometimes how easy certain things come to him. They're very natural. And to most people, those are not natural. In fact, they're far from natural. They are things that people, I mean, you have to understand that people can't even resist a candy bar, literally. And you're, you know, that's they have very, very, very little discipline. And this isn't to shit on other people you know, that they're not disciplined. It's to point out that most people aren't disciplined. And if you're someone that wants to achieve success, one of the things that you need that most successful people inside, I'd really even go so far as to say to all successful people that make money on their own and don't inherit it, 
um, are very disciplined in one form or another. And you happen to be disciplined in lots of different ways. But most people can't even master discipline with one exercise, diet, work, family, anything. I mean, it could go on and on. And they really don't have lots of discipline. Well, you know what I have to say whenever you compare me to other people or yes, you other people. I know, I know. Certainly has nothing to do with me. That's right. And remember, that a quote I said earlier, a quote I mentioned earlier is how you do anything is how you do everything. So as you get discipline in one area, you get discipline in another other area, in another area. And then you just, you become naturally disciplined person. You just put your head down and do what yeah. needs to be done because it's ingrained and it's part of your DNA. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people, their DNA Listen, is I, total 100% undisciplined. Right. I've year. also said to John, there are people, let's just talk about like some money, money things with people. There are people that have achieved uh, king's ransoms of wealth and they're fat. And they're not they, happy. And they will say to you, I can't, I can't lose weight. I can't keep it off. Discipline with the discipline that it took to make all that money. Again, if they didn't inherit it and they worked at it and they did it and they figured it out, but they can't even figure out just not how to eat as much food or the kind of food that they're eating and just exercise more. I mean, you'd think, God, you amass 100, 200, 500 million dollars or a billion, 5 million, 5 billion, 10 billion. John and I know these people and uh with these types of people and they're not able to lose weight and keep it off not that weight's the most important thing i'm just talking about discipline something that you'd think would be easy compared to making all that money and they can't even do it yeah well everything comes down to discipline and and, and they most That's likely the spent and uh jonathan mentioned balance before and yeah you can build make a lot of money you could build a big business but if your family's being neglected and your health's being neglected that's not a win-win. It's just not no, a win-win. Agreed. That's, that's what John was saying. That's the point of this conversation is uh, I think that you were saying that, you know, you want to have some sort of peace and make the money, you know, have a really good life, but have a really good life because everything's got to be balanced. Yeah. Well, business is a stepping stone to get us what we want, when we want to do what, what we want, whenever we want to do it. You mean it's, money. It's to, it's mean to money. give us freedom give us money. more money to create freedom yeah and we want the business to benefit our family and so on but if you're working your whole life and you're not seeing your kids and you're not taking vacations and you're not taking care of yourself then you're just building a business for what what our business is here to take care of us and that's what people need to but it takes discipline to do the work to get the business to take care of you and what people don't understand is things don't happen you can't, can't give up halfway either by the way yeah Good and bad. Halfway and think that you're that you deserve the the full Monty. There was a great quote. Uh, every morning I put a quote on my Facebook uh, post, and it was: "There's two reasons to be uncomfortable. One is because you're going outside your comfort zone. The other is because you're staying inside your comfort zone." Hmm. Interesting concept. So you're uncomfortable going outside your comfort zone, but it's making you more successful because you're stretching. But you're uncomfortable because you never went outside your comfort zone and you stayed in this little pool. And one day you're sitting at the bar saying, you know, I could have been a contender. I would have, should have, should have, like you mentioned. So I rather get comfortable being uncomfortable so I can create more and become more instead of just being comfortable pretty sitting in the recliner. Pretty, pretty interesting. Just And it's interesting when, just by using words, if you focus in on the words, you've heard it a million times. From I mean, me. I've, from I've, me. I've heard it yeah, from a million <laughs> yeah. times. John, I've been saying be, it for a long time. You need to be uncomfortable in no. comfortable situation. No, opposite. Oh. That, maybe that maybe that's the problem. You need to be uncomfortable and comfortable. Oh, I need to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> John, you need to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations. That's right. And uh, that definitely has resonated extremely well to me. But specifically, how you said it when you dissect the words, you can say it again, coach. Yeah, there's two reasons to be uncomfortable. One is because you're consistently going outside your comfort zone or you're staying inside, inside your comfort zone. Inside your comfort zone. Hmm. Interesting. It's kind um, of like live uncomfortable now so you can live comfortable later or well, I, live comfortable I, now and you yeah. will live uncomfortable, uncomfortable later. later. That's I'll tell you, um, I have always felt like I, I am not comfortable living within my comfort zone. I'm not. And that's why I always am doing things 
outside of my comfort zone of pushing things, saying things, doing things, because uh, I don't feel comfortable in my comfort zone. And I, I, I've never thought of it that way, but it's true. Well, at Grow agree? Club, I was, in the Absolutely. morning, I was doing a, a presentation and then I used uh, dissatisfaction, the dissatisfaction formula of what's your dissatisfaction. And mine is uh, when I was in Global in Maui, Brad Sugars was talking to all the coaches and he said this thing. He said, how dare you uh, underperform your true capabilities? I'm like, oh my God, I like that. And I wrote that down. How dare you underperform your true capabilities? And I took that quote as my dissatisfaction. It's almost like a fire. It's like a daily kick in the butt. Like you have so much more in you. There's so many more people you can impact. There's so much more you can be as a person. How dare you underperform your true capabilities? And that became an actually a, a rallying cry for me to just to say, okay, Mike, you're doing good, but step it up. Basically, step it up even more. how dare you stay in your comfort zone? Same thing. Yeah. yeah. That's how I feel. I've always felt that way without putting it into those words. I've never th thought of it exactly as you phrased it, but it's true. Yeah. So coach, let's get back to goals here. So I feel like most people would think that a goal, right, is as basic as this. All right, Jeff, we have this great business. Let's next year, we want to grow the business by 5%, yeah. 10%. That's the goal. And uh, I'm definitely here to tell you that's not really how you achieve goals, really. But, you know, Mike, I'd like to get your perspective on this. You know, I know, I know for me, um, it seems like a riddle, by the way, if somebody would say that to me, be like, oh, what's your goal for this year? Oh, we want to, you know, oh, we're like to grow by 30% every year, blah, 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 blah. Like, that's not really a goal. That's, well, that's, like, an not out of your, that's, that's like an objective. You know what I mean? That's within your comfort zone. So it's uncomfortable to you. Well, what's interesting, good or bad, first of I forget all, now. you, you got to be careful how we wrong. <laughs> Oh, crap. <laughs> They're both bad. <laughs> First of all, I, I talk to a lot of business owners when they, they tell me about these this grand scheme and this plans and the goals and everything. I said, okay, great. So you got that documented? Oh, no, it's all in my head. I'm like, oh, okay. So how's that working out for you? So first of all, we need to get clear on whatever the goal is. Why? Why? Why do you want that? Is it because once you get clear on why, the how becomes, the how just shows up. When you're, you're so disciplined and focused on where you want to go, all the right people show up, the right parameters show up, everything shows up. But if you're not crystal clear, but most people have a goal, but then I ask them why, and they don't know, necessarily know. Because all right, Jeff. So, so Jeff, we had a conversation today. We made a goal. What's your why? My why? Can you, my why what exactly? Why do, I, why do I have the goal that I have? Yeah. Why, do why I is have that important to you? Yeah, to have a goal. No, I said we we met today specifically. Yeah. I just want to really understand we, the question. We made a goal. We made a plan. Coach is saying that a lot of people don't highlight on the why. So what's your why? Why I have the goal I have that we decided today. It could whatever your why is. Your why could be a why is why am I doing this? Why do I want to achieve this goal? Why am I even here? Why am I even on this podcast? <laughs> You know what I mean? It could be any, whatever why okay. that relates to the goal. Right. It could be, why am I even writing this goal on a piece of paper? I think it's stupid. Okay. So why this goal? Uh, why this goal? Because um, I definitely want to achieve the money angle of it. And equally to that, I want to know that I am capable and Jonathan is capable of uh, creating and maintaining the machine to get to that monetary goal. That's very rewarding to me. And uh, then looking back on it, when you get to that goal, you know, you want to look back and sort of uh, have those memories and have those things to look at and to study and to sort of um, revel in. Because uh, I think that when you achieve such wonderful greatness and things, which is what we're trying to do uh, monetarily. Um, By the way, you're not trying. We're doing it. Yeah, yeah, monetarily. Exactly. I think that there is a, a lot of excitement in, like I said, reveling in it and analyzing. Because Who's I'm, reveling in it? You? 
your spectators, your customers? Who's me, reveling? Me, Who's reveling in it? Me and you. What are you reveling in though? Um, the success and what it took to get there. Everything involved with it. It because is a fun ride, isn't it? It is. And it's uh, even the, where we are now, we're very frustrated with how, with a lot of things right now at this particular moment with the businesses. But it really has been something. And I'll tell you, the experience has been very unique and it's been me and his experience, no one else's experience, me and him. And uh, that's very meaningful to me. Thank you for expressing. <laughs> you know what it's amazing is uh, when I did my book last year and we got the Amazon bestseller stickers and we had the box out. My wife wouldn't let me put one sticker on the book. She goes, no, I'm doing this. And she was telling me, she goes, you know, my dad would finally see what I saw in you that he didn't see. And I was looking at her. I said, you know, it's, this is kind of funny because I hated school. I hated reading. And I told her, I said, it's amazing what happens when each and every day you keep showing up. You keep showing up and you keep showing up. And then you sit down one day and you look what you've accomplished. Like, holy crap. Wow. It's amazing. You just keep showing up and you'll, you know, looking at your past and all the adversities and all the successes and everything, when you can say, you know, I feel good about the life I've created and what I've, people I've impacted and how I stood up with integrity and who would have thought I'd be doing some of the things I'm doing now that 10 years ago, that person, that person wouldn't have done that stuff. So yeah, it's just nice. The journey of just looking at the hard work of what it produces, how many people you impact. Um, the relationships have built, like you guys have gone through ups and downs and, you know, no, nothing's tighter than blood and there's nothing tighter than what you guys have. And that's why you keep on showing up every day and get successful. I think that's why I'm really into the, um, you know, pushing myself is in the, in the exercising of what I did on my birthday, because I'm, I'm a literal person, like literal, like literally, literally, like got to see it. Right. And, um, you know, as you exercise, you don't actually realize the gains that you're getting and when you're actually getting them and they come little by little week after week, but like, you know, you have to go through a whole week and then you have a little, and you go through another whole week and then you have a little, a little more, and then you don't really realize where you actually are at until you actually push yourself to the limit or you come across a situation you haven't come across before and you're able to achieve it. And I think it's definitely you know, something to, uh, it, it's made me kind of reflect on, you know, for personal and business. So now we know Jeff's why. So what, what does Jeff need to do now that we know his why? Well, why don't you say your why? Okay, well, we well, didn't go over my goal today. It was yours. We can do me okay. next time. Okay. So what's your next question for me? No, it's coach, coach, oh, lay, oh, lay it on oh. us. Sure. Well, the question, you know, about the long-term goal is what a lot of people don't realize is once you get clear on your long-term goal, whether it's five, 10, and the reason we do growth club is you get a 10 year goal, you knock it down to five, you scale it down to three, you scale it down to one and say, okay, let's just focus on the next 90 days. Okay, what needs to happen over the next 90 days just to make this happen to get to the long term goal? And what people don't realize, I just say, where do you want to go with the company? Once you get clear on that, all right, let's let's work backwards. What needs to happen between now and then? To so over the next 90 days, what happens needs to happen between now and December 31st? What happens needs to happen in 2003? What needs to happen over the next three years? What happens needs to happen over the next five? So, and when you start documenting these things, uh, you become more clear as you start talking to your team, as you start verbalizing to your customers. And it's so important, you know, there's a statistic that was done years ago that if you just write, write down your goals, just write them down, you increase your chances by 42% to achieve them. If you write down your goals and then get an accountability partner to hold you accountable to do what you say you're going to do to achieve your goals, you increase your chances by 73%. So for the first step is just writing them down. So when you write it down, it becomes more real. And then you guys are collaborating. You're talking about it. You're challenging each other. Why is that important? Why is this important? So you, you, it's constantly in your brain. So And unfortunately, a lot of people just don't do that. And, you know, you mentioned mastermind, 
Jonathan. And I don't think a lot of people know what masterminding actually means. It's just a term they throw around. Masterminding actually means the definition is when two or more people, two or more people like we are today, are in harmony in the same conversation. The conversation is about becoming more successful. Well, in the same conversation, we'll reach inf infinite intelligence. So when you're in harmony in the same conversation directed toward the same outcome, you reach infinite intelligence of where the, all the knowledge is, the universe of knowledge, like, oh my God, where did that come from? That's brilliant. How did we, where did that come from? And that's the advantage of not only having a coach, but having partners that are on the same page as you collaborate and talk about these things. You're getting ideas that normally wouldn't be there if you were sitting in a room all by yourself. So that's really the illustration of mastermind. That's why when we do growth club and people are comparing notes and talking about things when you were with Frank and Josh and you say, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? That is absolutely positively so important, but it all starts with the, the owners of the organization knowing where they want to go with the organization. Because if you don't want to know where you want to go and then you're telling your team to follow you and they say, well, where are we going, boss? I don't know, just, 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 just let's go. So now you clearly articulate to your team of how they need to show up to get to the objective of where you want to go as an organization, how they can benefit. And that's why it's so important to get really crystal clear on where you're going, document it so you can articulate it to your team, get them inspired, just like you're inspired. So. Certainly is a fun journey. So I'd like to end here on uh, the risk, right? Because you know, with achieving any goal, there has to be a certain level of risk taken to try to achieve your goal. It just doesn't happen by just, you know, lollygagging down the street and, you know, wishing in one hand and, you know, you know, whatever in the other one. Shitting in the other. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of risk. So an interesting thing, actually, I'm reading a book now, actually, and uh, I could be wrong with like the numbers or whatever, but I think this is interesting. So Warren Buffett, when he was 65, he was only worth like $3 billion, something along those lines. And it was after he was 65, is he was worth $35 billion. And I thought that was interesting how, you know, you really have to be along. For, so, you know, whether I'm off five years or 10 years is really irrelevant. The point I wanted to make yeah. was, you know, he was along for the whole ride and he didn't get off. And, you know, Warren Buffett is a little bit more related to, you know, riding the ups and downs of the market and really the compounding effect of your money. That's really more what he's and obviously picking really good companies to buy, of course. Uh, but that's really his, where his success is. It's in longevity. Uh, but I just thought it was interesting because, you know, we're making a plan, we're making it a strategy and, you know, it ain't over until it's over. And Amen. somebody like him, the uh, Bernie Marcus with Home Depot. I was just going to comment and say that. Was another one. Didn't come up with Home Depot with his oh, was 50. 50. And he was just a regular Joe. I know somebody else yeah. is 50. And Three. you know, what's Three. interesting is uh, Warren Buffett, he became more successful of the things he said no to. He would say no to a thousand things. He was very, very focused on what he would say yes to and everything else just, it's, it's almost like noise. He didn't even hear it. And he was disciplined. So all, you know, it's interesting, Jonathan and Jeff, that success leaves clues. There's many, many successful people out there, truly successful, that they leave clues of how to do things. But it's amazing how many people fight the trend. Just do the success, the things that successful people do, Stay disciplined, do the work, show up, work on yourself, uh, get clear on your goals, show up every day as your best, and things will work out. But that takes work, that takes effort, that takes energy, that takes stamina. It's not for everybody. No, it's not. So, Jeff, what's the risk? Well, the first thing is I think it should be a calculated risk. Okay. 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 I think the risk is disappointment and not being able to handle it, whether it's disappointment, meaning that you lose money, disappointment that you lose faith in yourself because you couldn't make something work out. I think most people need to be willing to realize that uh, you need to be able to handle it and think that they can handle it if it doesn't work out. And I think most people are afraid of what that might be like because it's the unknown. And I think when you take a calculated risk, you have to have some fucking guts. And most people don't have the guts because it scares them about what they don't know. 
And that goes back to being comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. I've heard that before. And it, it tops it off with the greatest risk is knowing what to do, but not doing it. The greatest risk is not taking action. That's the greatest risk. That's really the risk. There's going to be risk no matter the decision, what decision we make. And you calculate a risk, but not doing anything, that's a big risk. You'll be sitting yeah. down contemplating that one day. That's for sure. Yeah. I would agree. So, Coach, let's wrap up uh, today. I appreciate the call with you. Um, and how do we end our calls, Coach? Well, it was a key point of value from our conversation today there, gentlemen, and for all you listeners. So, Jeff, what was your key point of value from today's conversation? Oh, this guy won't stop with me today. No, no uh, I feel like we're interviewing Jeff maybe today, Coach. It's like two, <laughs> two on one here. The key point of the conversation for me today is always slow and steady. And sometimes I tend to get riled up with a bunch of my emotions and it is very easier said than done, which by the way, everything in this world is easier said than done. Everything. Amen. Got that right. However, easier said than done to um, not get myself riled up in the moment. But uh, I think I need to remember slow and steady because I'm someone that has a lot of energy and a lot of chutzpah, so to speak, which is a lot of balls. And someone that has um, a lot of wanting and expecting my way. And I need to sometimes realize that that's not how it goes. Everything doesn't spin on my timetable, my reactions, my expectations, et cetera. So I need to do a better job of realizing that. Excellent. Jonathan? Uh, my key point of value from today's conversation actually has nothing to do with today's conversation, but it does. <laughs> Okay. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> and I'm curious about this answer. Is more often than you think, you need to slow down to speed up. I like that term. I heard that before. Yeah. I've, I've, I know what you're saying. That may I interrupt you. Uh, you may, but it's it's my key point of value. Your but point, maybe you're I, getting value. I, my my no, key point I, of value. But can, no, I see if I, can I see if I know what what what, what might have instigated please. you saying that? Yes. So what might have instigated you saying that is because you specifically forced us to do that today. Well, I think that it's uh, again, it's in earlier today. It's an it's important yeah. to make sure you're aligned with the mission and the goal and the who, what, why, where, and what we're doing and why we're doing it. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you don't need like a break or, you know, some people are think that like, yeah. Oh, you gotta have a break. I need to have a vacation. Oh my God. The phone, blah, 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 blah. And it's not exactly that, <laughs> you know, you might very well need it. You might deserve it, you know, for whatever anyone thinks about deserving, you know, stuff like that, but it's a whole nother topic of conversation. But as far as this, you know, these are just small moments of alignment. And I think that, you know, slowing luckily, down to speed up. Luckily, we're, you know, we are partners together and we're allowed to kind of see these different cues. Yeah. So we can, you know, take these different tools that we've learned and yeah. use them even on each other yeah. to, you know, keep making sure that we are aligned with the goal of where we want to go, how we want to do it, how we want to take care of all these people that work in our companies. Right. Just so specifically, everyone understands. John told me yesterday, we have to have lunch today. We have to have some, take some time out, go over a bunch of things and just sit and have a quiet conversation and go through things methodically and slowly. And that's what we did. That's what I think you're referring to as an example. Thank you for expressing. Awesome, gentlemen. <laughs> Coach, well, thanks again. We appreciate you joining us today on the thanks, Cultivating Michael. Success podcast. As always, we love to keep referring you to people. If anyone's interested in ever connecting with Coach Michael, please, Mike, give them your details so they can get in touch with you. Uh, my website is businesscoachmichaeldill.com. My number is 954-675-9536. Feel free to go Coach Michael Dill's YouTube page or go to Amazon and pick up Knock It Out of the Park Leadership by yours truly. Read a book. And actually, the conclusion we'll talk about what these gentlemen finished off with, slow and steady wins the race, slow down to speed up.
Gentlemen, been a pleasure, been an honor, been a privilege. Appreciate it, Coach. Thanks, Thanks again. Michael. This has been the Cultivating Success Podcast with Jeff Sofer and Jonathan Wolfson. To learn more about Jeff and Jonathan and their businesses, visit www.naturesexperts.com.